When Rentaru Satomi was young, he had a close encounter with Agastria when it attacked the refugee camp. He heard a voice telling him to survive if he didn't want to die. Ten years later, he is now a civil security officer heading to an apartment believed to have confirmed Gastria. Apparently some army guys didn't want him to hog the glory, so they went in first and paid the price. However, their massacre wasn't due to Gastria but to this masked man, Kagatane Haruko. They fight, but Rentaru is no match. He leaves after getting a call, but tells Rentaru that he will be the one to destroy this world. Rentaru's partner, Enju, is furious that she fell off his bicycle, and he didn't have the decency to pick her up. Along the way, she meets a guy infected with Gasteria who is seeking help. She can only look with pity because it is already at an advanced stage and beyond help. A stage 1 spider, Gastria, bursts out of its host's body. Rentaru arrives in time to fire his special bullets made out of Varanium, the only material that could defeat those beings and prevent their regeneration. As explained, Enju is an initiator, those born to fight Gastria, while Rentaru is a promoter, those in charge of keeping initiators under control. The duo leaves the messy cleanup to the detectives since they need to rush for some time-limited cheap sales. Thanks to that, their agency boss, Kasara, is furious that, because of that, they lost their reward and compensation from the police. Business is slow because their office is located in a shady area. When Kasara brings up the subject of whether he still thinks about his parents, he becomes upset. He is still sensitive after all these years when people talk about it because they died in that war. Rentaru goes to see Sumiri who is a Gastria researcher. She chides him for being lazy because he left the Varanium bullet shells he shot at the scene. She hints that if he doesn't buck up, Kasara won't look his way. On to serious business, they discuss the source of the infection. Since there are no reports, there will be more victims at this rate. Sumiri also explains how the Gasteria virus rewrites DNA in an irregular way. That's why it can become strong and faster in a short time. Back home, Rentaru injects Anju with a daily shot. After a meal, they are tired so he instantly goes to bed. When morning comes, Rentaru wants Enju to lead a normal life. He gives her a lift to school. Then he explains that the Gastriria virus normally spreads among humans through bodily fluids. But there are rare cases where they enter the mouth of a pregnant woman and infect their child. They become cursed children. All of them were born girls and have red eyes. Although the virus is inside their body, some inhibiting factors slow its corrosion. However, there are many who refuse to recognize such children as humans. Peace is maintained thanks to those girls inheriting Gastria's regeneration and physical abilities. They hated Gastria and a curse Gastria put upon humanity. However, they are mankind's last hope against them. All the promoters and initiators are called to an important meeting. This Hulk promoter, Shaojin, doesn't like Rentaru, and they almost fight if not for Shaojin's boss, Mikajima, telling him to stop. The meeting is initiated when Seitenchi, the ruler of Tokyo, appears on the screen. Beside her is Kikunojo, Kasara's grandpa, and Rentaru's adoptive father after his parents died. Seitenchi has two missions for everyone. Find the source of the Gastria infection, and bring back a case. As a matter of privacy, she will not mention its contents. Kasara is suspicious. Why call all the top pairs to hunt down such a case? It must contain something very dangerous. Suddenly, Haruko is heard giving his opinion. He introduces his daughter, Kohina, who is also his initiator. He makes known his intention that he is joining the race to retrieve the case that has the inheritance of the seven stars. He makes a bet with them. If he gets it first, they will all pay with their lives. Everyone attacks him, but their bullets cannot penetrate his barrier. Everyone starts panicking when Haruko reveals himself to be from the 787th Mechanization Special Unit of the SDF Eastern Division, an anti-Castria unit, and a new humanity creation plan survivor. He returns the bullets to everyone, killing many of them. After he leaves, Seitenchi adds another condition. They must retrieve the case before Haruko can destroy the monoliths. While Rentaru and Enju are walking through the shopping district, they see a cursed child being chased and beaten for stealing. Enju wanted to help, but Rentaru stopped her. She becomes upset that he didn't save her and calls him a liar, saying that despite his claims to be a champion of justice, he cannot do anything. This invokes his inner conscience, so he goes off to save that child. But to his horror, he sees the authorities shooting and killing her in some deserted building. Luckily, she is still breathing, so he sends her to the doctor and assures her he will pay her bill. On his way back, he encounters Haruko and Kohina. Father orders his daughter to chop off his arm. Luckily, Enju is here to aid him, but Haruko will not allow bloodthirsty Kohina to kill her. Haruko offers Rentaru to join forces with him by explaining the discrimination and double standards in this area. He has seen it with his own eyes. Humanity should just face extinction and greater beings like them should become the next rulers. Rentaru rejects his proposal. 
Haruko warns that he will face reality soon enough. Visit Enju's school tomorrow, and he will see. When he does, the rumors that Enju is a cursed child have spread. Everyone was keeping away from her so much that Enju ran away. Rentaru is upset with everything, but there is nothing much he can do but go find her. He makes his way to the sewers of the underground district. The cursed children may not know her, but they think the elder who takes care of them may. Matsuzaki believes in teaching these girls how to control their emotions so their red eyes won't show, and they can live in society. As for Enju, he hasn't seen her. He thinks his initiator ran out on him and it would be better to get a replacement. He just need to contact IISO and make a new contract with a new initiator. For many promoters, initiators are just tools for fighting. Rentaru raises his voice, saying that his relationship with Enju has nothing to do with initiator or promoter. He remembers that her heart was closed when they first met. But once the ice was broken, they became like you see them. They're always together. He leaves to continue his search. Matsuzaki hints to the hidden Enju nearby that she is lucky to have a nice man like him. Sumiri is listening to Rentaru's boring complaints about the discrimination. She talks about some believing Gestria is like God's messengers trying to clean up humanity responsible for the world's resources deterioration and destruction. Rentaru is adamant that Enju is human but is told if she knows it herself as cursed children or abandoned children who have never known their parents. The world views them with scorn. Rentaru receives a call from the teacher saying that Enju showed up at school. All the kids are trying to keep her away. Rentaru will have her change schools, but she is not willing as she has made so many friends. But Rentaru says these aren't her friends anymore. Rentaru and Enju are called for another mission. This time, the source of the infection was in the midst of the dense jungle. There is a spider model Gestria. Enju quickly fights and defeats it as proof she protected her school friends. As they hug, Rentaru assures her that he will always be by her side, even if the entire world doesn't accept her. Before they could retrieve the case, Haruko and Kohina attacked them. As Enju and Kohina clash, Rentaro and Haruko display their abilities. Kagatane overpowers Rentaro with his maximum pain. Rentaro looks towards Enju, telling her to run, although she promises to come back with help. Kohina stabs Rentaru before Haruko shoots him. Luckily, Rentaru has not died yet. He is alive in the hospital, with Kasara by his side. Kasara reports Haruko has taken the case, which contains materials to summon Stage 5 Gastria. When Gastria reaches that stage, not even Veranium can stop them, and it will be the end of humanity. Haruko has escaped outside the barrier, and is believed to be trying to summon it. Seitenshi personally calls Rentaru to inform him that she would like him to participate in a mission to hunt down Haruko. Sumi redrops lots of weapon gifts for him. Rentaru mentions the dream he had while unconscious. Sumi re-operated on him ten years ago and gave him a choice. Sumi re doesn't expect to be forgiven, but Rentaru says he never once thought of resenting her. Rentaru and Enju are dropped into the thick jungle and barely escape from a rampaging Gastria. They see a hut nearby but find Kao Senju alone. She is Xiaojin's initiator. Noticing her hand is wounded, Rentaru bandages it. Kao explains her team is supposed to be in the vanguard, but because Xiaojin is the action type, he went ahead first. They encountered Gastria, and without thinking, she set off explosives, and that's when they got separated. Although she got injected with Gastria's fluid, it was a very small amount, so there was no need to worry about corrosion. Xiaojin calls Kao to meet up because he has found Haruko. As they make their way, they see the Ladder of Heaven, a weapon of mass destruction and symbol of the stolen generation's hatred. Kao thinks what is going on right now is an attempt to revive it. Overlooking the forest, Kao decides to fight all the Gastria in the forest so that Rentero and Enju can go locate Xiaojin under the promise that she'll run away if she gets pressured. The pair then make their way to the nearby village, where they find a severed arm and Xiaojin, who walks out of a building before dying. With his buster sword sticking out of his back, Kohina and Haruko appear before the two on top of a nearby building, with the latter man demanding to settle his and Rentero's score. Meanwhile, in the control room for the operation, Seitenshi calls upon Kasara to come in and asks her what Rentero and Enju's success rate is, to which she responds total victory. When doubts regarding Rentero's abilities surface, Kasara explains that ten years ago, Rentero lost his right arm, right leg, and left eye to a gastria, and that he was saved by Surgeon Sumiri. Back at the village, Haruko tells Rentero he will not retrieve the legacy of the Seven Stars because they are in his way. Rentero talks briefly about his humiliation at the hands of Haruko and promises to eliminate him, breaking through the man's maximum pain with his own Rokuro Kebuto, punching him away, and leaving Haruko surprised. However, the skin around Rentero's right arm and right leg deteriorate, 
revealing that his limbs are veranium replacements, making Rentero part of the new humanity creation plan like Haruko himself. Haruko expresses his delight at feeling alive, but Kohina attacks Rentero in anger. Though Enju and Rentero block her strike, Enju goes after Haruko while Rentero deals with Kohina. Ceasing their battle for a moment, Haruko reveals that battling Kestria gives his life a purpose, once more offering him a chance to join him, which Rentero once again refuses to take. Enju then proceeds to attack Haruko, but he blocks her strike and attacks her with his Veranium firearms. Rentero blocks the bullet, but Haruko uses the opening to blast a hole through Rentero's lower body, critically wounding him. Fearing that he is going to die and leave Enju all alone, Rentero injects himself with multiple AGV experimental drug syringes, which heal his injuries. He then proceeds to brutally defeat both Kohina and Kagatane in a single strike each. After the fact, Rentero receives a phone call from Kassar and learns that a stage V Gastria has appeared, which wreaks havoc. Learning that the only way they can stop it is with the Ladder of Heaven, Rentero and Enju rush to the device and start it up, intent on killing the beast with a high-powered Veranium blast. However, Rentero quickly learns that there are no Veranium rounds loaded into the ladder and, running out of options, decides to tear off his own Veranium arm to use as ammunition. Unable to remotely fire the railgun, Rentero is forced to fire it manually, which he successfully does, killing Scorpio. After the fact, Rentero covers a sleeping Enju with his jacket and goes off in search of Kao, where he finds her fatally wounded. When she sees him, Kao asks if Xiaojin is safe, which Rentero lies about and says yes. He notices her body turning into that of Agastria's, saying that without a doubt, her corrosion rate has exceeded 50%. Kao then tearfully asks Rentero to kill her while she's still human, expressing her gratitude at the fact that he recognized her as such. He shoots the initiator, fulfilling her final wish. Rentero later meets with Kikinaji Tendo and confronts him about Haruko, asking if the one who hired the masked man worked under him. Rentero accuses Kikinaji of trying to summon Scorpio to destroy Tokyo and stop the new Gestria law. Kikinagio asks Rentero how he could have forgotten the pain and suffering the Gestria caused both of them and many others, as well as how he could expect him to give those who carry their power equal rights. Rentero tells him that he will spare his life and gratitude for saving his own years ago and leaves, telling Kikinagio that he never forgot what happened ten years ago. Thereafter, Rentero visits Seitenchi and asks her about the tricycle that was inside the case for the Legacy of the Seven Stars. She denies Rentero any information about what the legacy truly was or about what Gastria truly are. Rentero meets up with Enju in a park and reflects upon Seitenchi's words about the new Gastria law and rising up in ranks, explaining that if he does with Enju, he'll be given the answers to all the questions he seeks. However, in Sumiri's lab, she leaves the computer on, which reads that Enju's corrosion rate is at 42.8% and that she is nearing full bodily breakdown. Kisara says there is a bodyguard job for Rentaru. Seitenchi picked him herself for the job since Kikinojo is temporarily overseas. Seitenchi explains the details of the job. She would like him to station himself beside him for the rest of the informal meeting. Rentaru is introduced to them in the head, Yasuaki. Rentaru isn't on friendly terms and won't shake his hands. Because he is only here to listen to the job details and hasn't agreed to do it. Later, Yasuaki and his men cornered him in the toilet. He wants him not to take the job as the spot next to Seitenchi belongs to him. Rentaru doesn't take orders from him. Yasuaki orders his men to break his limbs, but he fights back. They had to flee when the guard heard gunshots. Yasuaki is so mad, because Rentaru's bullet scratched his pretty face. Just as the guard arrives, who questions what happened, Rentaru tells him to notify Seitenchi that he will accept her offer. On his way out, he sees several men trying to bully a girl. They flee when Rentaru flashes his civil security badge. Tina Sprout is impressed, and that he is her superhero. Rentaru notices her taking caffeine, as it is hard for her to stay awake during the day. She trolls with him about the things she did this morning, and he knows she is lying. More trolling when she calls the number he gave her just to confirm he isn't lying, and that she actually knows where she lives. Later, Tina gets a call from her master, and her mission is to assassinate Seitenchi. That night, she puts on her best dress and gets stuff ready. The policeman doesn't think a young girl should be out by herself. Tina's master tells her to kill him. Back home, Miori Shiba collapses in front of Rentaru's door due to her cold. This is followed by Kasara, who is hungry. Rentaru knows this is trouble because both girls hate each other. Miori is the daughter of a large-scale weapons company president who supplies veranium bullets. The next day, Rentaru escorts Seitenchi to see President Saujin Seide, 
He is the area's head, and among the five area heads who united their respective areas after the Gastria War, Sadek is the most dangerous of them all. In the meeting, Sadek blames Renteru for destroying the railgun Maj as he planned to send it up to the moon. His target isn't just Gastria. He has this vision that after Gastria is eliminated, a new leader of the new world is needed. His goal is to get all the power he wants and eliminate those who stand in his way. He believes his will is Japan's and that Japan's will is his. After the meeting, Seitenshi is depressed but praises Renteru for not yielding to him. Because Japan produces the most veranium thanks to its archipelago of volcanic islands, Renteru believes Seidek is supplying that person with veranium to get money and weapons. She wants Renteru to continuously be her bodyguard, as this area is not safe and she can foresee high-ranking assassinations. She wants to be the embodiment of peace and show that she is not just talking. When Enju wakes up, she has a bad feeling. Renteru protects Seitenshi from a sniper's fire. Enju deflects another shot as the bodyguards escort her into a building. Renteru can sense the enemy is gone and wonders who that person is. Tina reports her failure to her master, but will get the job done. Since it was too far, she couldn't see the skilled bodyguard's face that protected Seitenshi. Tina sits on a bench near a river as she waits for Rentero. Rentero finally arrives, bringing with him a food for Tina to eat up. Rentero thinks back on the sniper that attacked the previous night, recalling the time he spent looking for clues on who it may be. Returning to reality, he watches as Tina drops the food before it enters her mouth. Grabbing the bento from her, he begins to feed her, which she is grateful for. Tina thanks Rentero for the food, admitting that today has been a fun day. Rentero, however, tells her that the day prior was uneasy for him but notes how currently he is also enjoying himself. Tina then tells Rentero that she likes him. Her phone rings, leading her to leave the area and enter an alley. She receives an order to assassinate Kasara Tendo. Tina looks up as she firmly accepts the mission. Rentero heads back to Magata High School, where two girls quickly leave the area after witnessing a heavily armed Kasara. Kasara gets behind the door, telling Rentero that they will break in and take Mori's head. However, Rentero affirms that there is no need for that, only to be pulled in by Miori's hand. Once inside, the two talk about the sniper and the weapon used, but Miori is not able to find the sniper. Rentero then tells her to do some research on Sojin. Rentero quickly arrives at Sumiri's laboratory. After a brief conversation about his success in defeating Haruko and having his IP rank reach 1000, Sumiri explains that she will now be able to reveal information about the other three sages to Rentero and Enju. She tells him that the sages are responsible for creating mechanical soldiers and that those who hold lower IP ranks are the ones who possess mechanical bodies. Rentero leaves, Sumiri asking Enju to stay behind. Meanwhile, in the streets of the Tokyo area, Tina speaks to her master, who reveals information about Kasara. He then proceeds to tell Tina about Enju. However, before he is about to tell her about the promoter, she is bumped by a person behind her, losing contact with her master. Tina arrives at the Tendo Civil Security Corporation. When she begins her assault, Kasara grabs her snow shadow and breaks the head of Tina's weapon, but Tina recovers and attacks Kasara, pushing her into a corner. Just then, Rentero enters the room and kicks Tina back. Rentero fights her for a while, but stops when he realizes who his opponent is. Kasara is then told to cut the ground, which she does. Tina leaves the scene as Kasara is taken to the hospital due to her diabetes. Now at the hospital, Kasara and Rentero converse about the former's renal issue with Kisara reminding Rentero that noted illness is what keeps her aiming for the Tendo's annihilation. Momentarily, Kisara moves to the window after rising from the bed, closing the window, and asking Rentero to hold her hand. But as Rentero is about to do so, Enju arrives and prompting Kisara to jump forward. The three walk outside, with Kisara telling Rentero that she will task him with the duty of protecting the Tokyo area. Rentero then hurries to Seitenshi's side, accompanying her to the next meeting. In the car, Rentero expresses his thoughts, telling Seitenshi that he will protect her, although he disagrees with her method of acting. Arriving at their destination, Takuto confronts Rentero for allowing Seitenshi into such a vehicle. However, their conversation ceases when the sniper returns, aiming for Seitenshi. Rentero takes Seitenshi back to the car, telling the driver to move quickly. Along the way, the sniper shoots once again. In the nick of time, Rentero tells the driver to enter a nearby garage. Getting out of the car, Enju tells Rentero that she will go after the sniper initiator, which he permits. Seitenshi steps out in the open and tells Rentero to call Enju, as she will not be able to win against their opponent. Tina is a mechanical soldier and initiator with an IP rank of 97. Rentero calls Enju's phone but is shocked upon being greeted by silence. Elsewhere, Tina takes Enju's phone and places it on her ear, unable to speak to Rentero. 